Hi, this is Tessa Keo, and today I thought we'd discuss reports in Legacy. One of the questions we get most often in the Legacy Virtual Users Group is how do I enter and then fill in the blank? It could be a census, a find a grave entry, a birth certificate or a marriage index, or even arrival information. One of the major reasons we enter our data into Legacy is because we want to get something out of it, right? I make a point when our members ask that question to say, use your events, your notes, your to-dos, and any combination of those items to enter information. What you enter and how you enter depends on your workflow. Now, just because someone tells you how they think it should be done, remember, you own Legacy, it doesn't own you. Enter your data where it makes sense for you, be sure to cite your sources, and then take a look at a few possible reports and make any changes so that the work product looks how you want it to look. And then you have a template of sorts for how you do your data entry. The point of today's Tuesday's tip is to encourage you to start at the back end. Take a look at what the reports look like based on how you've entered your data and then make some decisions because in order to have a great product you need to have given your data entry a little bit of thought. Now I'm going to show you mine which is one way of doing it, not necessarily the best way and certainly not the only way, but it's the best way for me. I'm also going to show you a few snippets from a couple of different reports and then encourage or perhaps challenge you to share your tips and suggestions and suggest other reports that you find especially useful when you use Legacy. Now let's get started. Here again we're going to be visiting with Lawrence and Catherine Murphy. Now as you can see I'm working in Legacy version 7.5. The layout's pretty much the same as version 8.0 but I'm still playing around and getting used to version 8 and so I'm keeping my active database in version 7.5. Here you can see that I have highlighted Lawrence Edward Murphy and I always use my RIN numbers so that is in there following his name. So I know that that particular Lawrence Edward Murphy is RIN number 202. Now you can also see that there are a few things highlighted or lit up and that is the spouse, the parents, the children, the notes, the events, and sources. Now if we click on the individual's information you can see the events or facts section. I tend to work in this view but I know plenty of users who work in other views so do what makes the most sense for you. I also use events and facts generally. This is where any and all pieces of information go because I want to be able to read through the events, the facts, or any tidbits of information in chronological order. It's just how my brain works. We've talked about events in previous Hangouts and some use shared events in version 8. Others use the clipboard and copy and paste method. Some use the sentence structure that Legacy provides and others edit their sentence event definitions and their sentences. Clicking from the family and individual view to chronology. And this is the key in my opinion. It's to enter your data in a way that helps you get the output you want. So how do you check that? Well I start with the chronology report and this view shows you how your report looks as you've set it up. Now as you can see I played with the fonts, the colors, and how the columns are formatted and that's found in options. This is how the report looks on the screen but by clicking on the report you can dig a bit deeper and take a look at how your report would look published. As you can see when you click on the report and options tab a number of options are available. What do you want to include? How do you want to format your data? What do you want the width of the columns and the page layout to be? What's included with your sources and what fonts you're using? So basically what you want in your report and how you want it to look. Play around, click and unclick various options until you get something that works for you. So I've given my chronology reports a general title, the story so far. I've asked that the age timeline run vertically along the individual's information. Because of the way I enter my dates, locations, and events, this is what my report looks like. So for a census, the lines of the census sheet, the dwelling, and family numbers always start out the event notes. 
Each individual is set off and the information is abstracted. Here I took the age, gender, race, occupation, value of property, where the individual was born, where their parents were born, and whether the individual was a citizen. Note that the information sought and responses received are different for each census enumeration. I spell most everything out and for my reports I put the location in reverse order. Now this is the 1885 Nebraska State Census and it's in the exact same format although you'll notice that the information provided might be a bit different. And this is what the addition of family members or children looks like in the chronology report. And as you can see, I've selected a bright blue color so that it stands out. The 1900 census included the month and year of birth as told to the enumerator, how long the couple was married, and for women, how many children they'd born and how many of those children were living as of 1900. This is all great information to work your way through family members. We can also see occupation and school information. If you now knew the place, and you will from the census, you can search for schools and companies in the area that might have more information. Here are the examples of the source citation page. All of the citations are listed as endnotes because that's what I asked Legacy to do in Options. As you can see, my census citations follow very closely with evidence explained, although I'm a lumper, but that's another Tuesday's tip. Another way to check out your individual story is by taking a look at a specific report. In this instance, a family group record. But notice how many reports are available and check out the help section in Legacy for a complete list. Always be sure to check the chronology options, the index options, and the report options and then you can simply preview your report. You can always play around with and change things until the report and the way it reads works for you. As you can see, this is what the family group record looks like for Lawrence and Catherine Murphy. The personal information is in the top box because I asked for it, including the parents' information, the marriage information, and all of the individual's RINs and MRINs. And as you can also see, the photo shows up in the right-hand side if that's what you wanted. The events and facts are listed in order with their sentence and the source citation number as well as the notes contained in that event or fact. You saw the 1870 census on the previous slide and this is the 1900 census. Interspersed between those two events are two additional censuses, the 1880 U.S. Census and the 1885 Nebraska Census, as well as a change of residence in-state and a move across country. Because I requested it, I also have a bibliography and a name index. You can choose the columns, how the surname reads, the information about the individuals including birth and death year as well as RIN, and finally the location index. This can be in the order you see here from the smallest to the largest jurisdiction or in reverse order and you can see that for instance Avon is in Skagit County, Washington, and a number of the pages are shown there to indicate that that location shows up in that report on those pages. And at the time that Cordova, Alaska is listed and was used, that location did not have a county identifier, so I don't include one there. I always enter the locations as they were at the date of the event. And as you can see, Vancouver is listed, and this Vancouver is not in the state of Washington, but is in the province of British Columbia in Canada. Now, whatever you decide to do for your locations, the only piece of advice I'd give you is to be consistent. Now, I thought I'd show you a few different reports. The first is the calendar list, and specifically, I asked for a calendar list of all individuals with birthdays in the month of March. This prints out for the entire month, but I'm showing you a portion of that, which is a selection from March 10th to March 12th. And as you can see, the person's name is included, as well as their birth date and place. This is from Calendar Create. 
you can play with it to your heart's content to choose the fonts, the colors, the placement of the days, and the days of the week. You can also decide who you want to include, whether they're living, deceased, a combination of both. You can ask for birthdays and anniversaries, or just one or the other. I always include the RINs and the MRINs. You can really have fun with the calendar and use it to remember birthdays and anniversaries, or what I do, use it to select who in your family you might research on a given day. Another good report I use is the event report. You can select any event, and here I've used arrivals, and ask for the event information to be set out here by in all of the individuals who use it. And then this event sentence and the notes are included. This is a great way to check particular events and that you've been consistent with data entry, or to check for information for use with research with arrivals. Do you have their travel documents? Can you find them in later censuses? Here I've set the page layout for landscape in order to get more information on fewer pages. This is the event report that I use for my find a grave event. Here I've set the page layout to portrait. So I hope that gave you some ideas and a bit more information about how one legacy user enters data and what types of reports I use to help me with further research and special projects. This week, why don't you play around with reports in your legacy program? Today we played with chronology reports, family group record reports, calendars, and event reports. What reports are you going to play with? I'd also like to know what reports you use, and do you have any tips or suggestions to share with the rest of us? Please join in the conversation by commenting here in the community. Thanks for watching. Now, go out and play.